What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video we're going to look at working with underlays, which not something I use a lot when it comes to plans, things like that, but nonetheless it is useful. So if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, like why are you here, then please demolish the like button. It really, really helps me a lot. It also tells me that you might have just liked it. I don't know, you never know. Okay, getting into it now, underlays. So we're going to look at underlays uh, when it comes to floor plans, I mean, it's uh, it's typically what we're going to do. So what are, what are underlays in general? Well, it's if you're looking at a plan, imagine you're working, you're sketching, and you have a floor plan that you've sketched out, and you've got trace paper, and you have, you've built up layers of trace paper because you're designing something, and so uh, you maybe have a plan layout of things that, like furniture or whatever you might have, and that's on one layer, and the other layer is just walls, whatever. Let's say our basic floor plan, which is more or less just walls, is our actual floor plan itself that we see here on a screen, level two in this case. And then our underlay maybe is that furniture plan, or maybe it's you know the level below. You know, it's things like that. Um, now, we can't necessarily underlay actual plans, as in like a different view, uh, but we can underlay is what is maybe under or over the actual view that we're looking at. So this is separate from view range and what we actually see in the view as a part of the view itself. But the underlay will serve as something that is beyond the extent of what we can see in the view. And based on the settings we have for the underlay, it's going to show certain other things in our model. So my hope is that I can run through all the different underlay kind of options, elements, and things that we can uh, do with underlay so you can get an idea how to use it and when. Okay, so we can find underlay in the properties of the view. I'm not selected anything. I'm in the view itself, floor plan level two, and I can scroll down to underlay. That's what we want. And so the default is none. You know, it's not on. We don't have an underlay on, which is honestly pretty good because I have many times opened a view and there are elements that I see that I can't click or I don't know what they are or whatever. I think they're a design option, whatever. And it turns out it's an underlay. Like, oh, I just need to turn it off or whatever. But we want to use this for actual practical reasons and not just in getting in the way of other people. So let's go ahead and change this and let's see what our other options are. Well, the options will always be the levels in your project. And so in this case, I'm on level two. Typically underlay is going to, it's going to imply that you're going to look down or you're going to look at the level below or something below what you're looking at. But we have more options than just, than just that. But the key here is where we, where we, do we want to start? The base level. What is the extent as far as the base level of this underlay? Well, we have nice, because it's level base, we have the option of having things have a range. We have a base and a top level. So in this case, let's go and pick level one because the, the base is always going to be level one. And so as soon as I do that, I can see, wow, look at that. <laughs> it looks like level one's there. Well, and that's because by default, I have the range of the top level be level two, which is where I am, whatever. And then the underlay orientation, like I mentioned before, was default is looking down. So we look down. So essentially we are at, you know, we're at level two right here, but the underlay is between levels one and two, which is kind of everything in this case, basically everything that we would look at that's below us because we've chosen to look down. Now, we can always look up. This is going to look a bit different. And really the only thing I can see is kind of like the soffit of the garage or things like that. And, you know, I don't know why you'd want to do that necessarily, but it's kind of up to you. Now, that's great. This is cool. You can see what it is. I cannot select underlays at all. There's nothing to do. It just exists there. And they're not design options or whatever. But it is based on what I do. Obviously, if I come over here to level one, and I'll just drag this out to show you that this will actually update things. Let's go ahead and move this door. Move this door up here. It's all it's already moving in the underlay. It's, it literally is what is on level one. Great. Now, for the sake of this, I'm actually going to make what you would call a tower or just anything. Let's let's call it. It's going to be four walls. But I'm going to put my four walls over here, and it's going to span. All four of these walls are going to span from level one. And I'm gonna actually, I actually made another level for this, and that's going to be uh, the top of this tower, which is whatever. Now, I need to make another floor plan, which is going to be in view, plan views, floor plan, and there's my top of tower level. 
and that's going to populate there. Great. So I see nothing at this point because I need to make sure the tower, I guess, extends a bit farther. I know this is, isn't exactly right in the way we <laughs> would model things and have this be the top of the tower, but then extend beyond that. So for the sake of this, let's have this extend 10 feet. So we can now see where the tower is here. And so, I, you know, I don't really care about anything in this view, but the tower, but now that we're like above everything, and if I go to 3D, we could see that we're actually above everything. There's the tower, and it, we're kind of somewhere in here. Given that, we want to have an underlay. We want to turn the underlay. I want to make sure we have an orientation to what this is. And I, a lot of times, I don't use underlay for like what I'm going to submit in my drawings, like as the issued drawing, a part of it. But I often end up using it just for you know, orientation. I'm in a plan view, and it, I need to see what's below it or above it, how it works. And so let's come over here to the, uh, also for this, I'm going to slant this wall a bit uh, just so we can see that uh, as we move up and down the thing. So five degrees works great. We got this thing slanted as it's, you know, it's going down, whatever. So cool. With this, we want to turn our underlay on. And so let's go ahead, come down here to underlay. And I want to put this on, maybe again, we'll do the exact same thing that we did before. We'll have this on level one. We'll have the top of level two, and then we'll look down. So we'll see the exact same underlay that we saw on level two. If we turn this back on, of course, level one, there we go. So the exact same underlay is right there. Easy enough to understand. So now, because we have you know a third level, things like that, we can start to see a bit more. And maybe we want to say, oh, okay, I'm in the top here. I want my base level to be level two. Well, now I, I'm going to see a little bit less. And by less, I'm going to see not necessarily where I'm cutting through at level two or even level one, but like where the actual level two is. Like the base is level two, the top is the tower, and I'm looking down. So like, what am I seeing? What's at the top? Uh, the thing to know is like, what is at the top of the level? It's not, you don't have to worry, there's no cutting here. It's more of like the range is this, and you're going to look from the top of that range down. So the top of the range does include everything in the roof. So I'm just, all I'm seeing is the roof, which, and chimney, like whatever. Uh, that just kind of ends up being what it is. I could make another level in the middle of the roof. I wanted to cut through it for some reason, but I don't. Um, so that's uh, one, one thing to do and one thing to know. Now, if I want the range to be level one to the top of the tower, chances are I'm not going to see anything different. Well, I'm going to see some floors. That's about it. I'm going to see, let's say, more more roof. This is the rest of the garage roof, and this is the actual floor that extends out beyond you know, the actual interior into the exterior. So uh, there's a lot we can do here. And, and this is, of course, a great way to use underlays because we have this random tower element that we want to orient to the building and things like that, if not for issuing purposes, but just for like how, working in a floor plan view. We can do kind of the opposite, too, if we come into level one we can start to turn underlays on. Of course, we see this. It's on the ground. Um, but maybe we want to see an underlay of things that are going on above us for some reason. Well, let's go ahead and turn this on. And if I, again, just the default level one, level two, I'm not going to see a whole lot that's different. Now, because the top is level two, we're going to see basically the top range of being level two looking down. So wherever the level two is cutting, we're going to see everything below that, which is basically everything in level one, and then it just ha so happens to be that we see um, these light elements because they're at where they're seen and visible at where we cut for level two. And we can do the same thing, and if we start to do this, again, see the entire everything, is this helpful? To a degree, maybe we can see where this is above. Now, <laughs> the thing to note as well is that I'm still looking down. Now, I do see the deck that is technically above me, if I come to a 3D, we can see that this deck over here is what we're, what we're seeing. That is technically above me. And that's just because, again, the top of the range is literally above the whole building looking straight down. That's, I don't know why you would do this, because typically speaking, I would probably want to set my range to maybe level two and then start to look up. So let's see what happens when we look up. Change that to look up. And, well, nothing. <laughs> and that is, well, nothing changes between looking up and looking down because the extents of level one that I'm already on and looking up at level two is, again, I'm the same principle applies. I take this box that is that is 
between level one and level two where they're cut. And if I decide to look up, I'm looking from the bottom of the box up versus if I'm looking down, I'm looking at the bo top of the box down. So in this case, the base level being level one, I'm just seeing everything that is from level one, which I do already kind of see in the view, up to where level two is. And that's exactly what I'm seeing at level two. This isn't all that exciting. And if I change this to the top of the tower, I start to see, well, not much more. I don't see the roof mainly because I have roofs off <laughs> in my plan view. And otherwise I would see them here. And that's the main thing. Uh, you typically will not have roofs on in plan views. So just something to be aware of if you want to see the roof for some reason. So if we move this range to level two, my guess is we're not going to see a whole lot different. No, we're not going to see anything different because we were basically already seeing the extent of level two. And if I now if I put this up to the top of the tower, then I actually really don't see anything. And the reason for this is the only thing I see actually, which is at the base, is the rest of that what is above the tower, that 10 feet that I added that is above uh, the actual top of tower line, uh, cut level. And finally, the main thing is uh, the, that we haven't covered is the unbound. Well, so this being unbound means that basically I'm looking up from level one, just seeing everything. I don't see the roof mainly because I have roofs off. Now we could also see the roof if we went to level two and we have the top of the tower. So like we can still see the roof because we're looking from level two up. Um, but if we wanted to look down and see the roof, we could also keep, this is actually the top of the roof. We have the top of the tower, which is above the roof. And then we have level two, the extent we could see the roof. And if we want to see more of it, we can just come down to level one and there's the rest of the garage. So I, there's all kinds of things to do here, but just do note that the visibility graphics imp impacts this. It's not just see everything regardless of the visibility graphics. If I don't have roofs on, I can't see it. And that's a big thing here to note. Now the unbound thing again, if I'm unbound, it, it doesn't matter. It's just level one. I'm looking from the bottom of level one up. Well, look in this case, looking, I'm looking down at everything, absolutely everything. That So we again, we're looking at the top of the top level, wherever that is. And then if we're looking down, it's that top level. So in the case of it being unbound, I'm just above everything infinitely and looking down. So I see everything, absolutely everything. Now, if I were to look up and I'm unbound, then I have, I'm looking at the bottom of level one and then I'm seeing everything above level one regardless. And if you, you know, there's a nice overlay here, uh, the tooltip works really well. Uh, but if I wanted to see, for example, everything above level two and beyond, well, that's how we do it. And there's not much to see there. But maybe I want to see everything from the top of the tower and above, which is actually just going to be that little bit of the wall there. So, you know, all kinds of things that we can do with the underlay. I think it's really cool. It's a bit underused, even by me, and I think, uh, mainly because it, you don't think about it. You just go to level two and you work on level two. You go to level one, work on level one. And it just kind of gets lost. But if you want to really orient things together, this is a great way to do it. I mean, this is really helpful. It really is. Now, there's not a whole lot I can do other than actually aligning things. I mean, it's that's kind of why I'd want to do it. I can't select things, um, but I can actually snap to points if I wanted to you know, really move this furniture directly over this. I can do that right there. So the snapping and aligning, really nice stuff. Um, Again, another underrated reason why you might want to look at using underlays. So that will do it for this video. We looked at underlays, all the different settings that we have with underlays, how they work together, when to use them, and hopefully you get an idea of all of this, of how, not only how to use it, but when it can be helpful and when to use it. So if you did happen to learn something, which I hope you did, I mean, that, come on, why are you here? I, I really hope so anyway. Then please demolish that like button. Really, really helps me out a lot and you know, tells me that you might have learned something. Really appreciate that. So I will see you in the next Revit video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.